Hello everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video. I hope you guys are doing fantastic and we're going to be taking a look at what is currently happening across portions of the North Atlantic. We'll be talking about the Caribbean as well as the US and there is a stormy pattern which is coming a lot more storms for the US and we'll be looking at how this may impact the Caribbean. So let's get straight into it. We're looking at the current infrared satellite and here we can see this flow of activity in the gulf of mexico coming from the southwest and even some thunderstorms developing and all that activity kind of pushing into parts of southern florida so for some areas uh, there's been some heavy rain in the southern portion of the state this morning and by the way yesterday with all that stormy weather there was actually a tornado which touched down briefly and as for the Caribbean, we can see some of these cloud patches coming in from the east and nothing much is really happening in terms of a major weather system across the basin right now. Looking out into the Atlantic, there's that frontal system and uh, some activity which is noted along the intertropical convergence zone, which is where trade winds of the north and the south meet or converge as the name suggests. As we take a closer look at the Caribbean, here we can see so some areas have been receiving some showers even since last night. And uh, this morning, islands such as St. Vincent going toward the Grenadines, parts of St. Lucia, uh, even Tobago right now. And earlier this morning, Barbados experienced some showers, parts of southern Barbados. So as I said, with these cloud cust uh, clusters moving in, they do help to induce some rainfall. And that is exactly what we are seeing. And it is the same story across much of the Caribbean for those areas not experiencing much at all. Maybe there are some passing showers, some overcast skies at times. So that's been the kind of story. Now, as we take a look at the rainfall forecast for today here, we're seeing it from Euro. And we're seeing mostly again, as I've talked about in yesterday's video, these green shadings and these gray shadings as well. So much rainfall is not expected on a whole across the entire Caribbean. So yes, there may be some areas experiencing those intermittent showers, uh, which may be light, moderate, or even heavy at times. But for the most part, uh, widespread rainfall, significant rainfall is not expected today. We're in sort of a little bit of a drier pattern right now. And with some of these storm systems that will be moving through, they won't necessarily bring a lot of rainfall to parts of the Caribbean. But there is one in particular, maybe for early next week, which may bring some impacts uh, for some northern areas so I'll be going into that in a moment but as we can see again across much of the lesser Antilles, greater Antilles, parts of the Bahamas, as a matter of fact for most of the islands of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands much is not expected at all but uh, with the frontal system within the area the northwestern Bahamas and parts of South Florida may experience some additional rainfall maybe even some heavy downpours then as we head over into Central America and even for northern South America as well uh, there may be some periods of heavy rain but it's not expected to be widespread because we're seeing mostly these white spots which indicate that no precipitation is expected within those areas so it's going to be mostly dry but it has been windy for some areas for the past couple of days and as we head into later this morning here we can see that euro is showing mostly these darker shades of purples and these blues across all parts of the southern caribbean so it's going to be quite windy winds of at least around 10 15 knots maybe maybe even stronger than that going up to 20 knots across portions of the Lesser Antilles, the ABC Islands offshore of Colombia as well. But for parts of the Greater Antilles, it may be a bit on the tranquil side today. Similar story for much of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands and over into parts of Central America. But again, with that front in the area near Florida, uh, it is helping to result in those stronger winds. So winds have been kicking up across the Gulf. Now, as it relates to the wave heights expected, it's a similar story to what's been happening uh, yesterday, if you saw that update video. So it's that area offshore of Panama and Colombia to the south of Jamaica, where the most uh, significant wave height is expected to be. So up to around eight feet at the maximum there. And as we look toward the eastern islands, especially the Atlantic coast of the various islands of the eastern Caribbean, we can see that some of these green shadings are there as well in the darker blue. So some of these wave heights, five going up to six feet. And as we head into tomorrow, uh, we can see that things are going to be getting a bit 
rougher out there in that same general area across the Caribbean near uh, Colombia, the wave heights are going to be higher, expected to be maybe around 11, 12 feet at maximum there. And also for the eastern islands, the Atlantic side. Then looking further up to the north offshore of the east coast of the U.S., we can definitely see that those wave heights are absolutely uh, ridiculous out there up to over say 20 30 feet in those areas but uh, that is offshore thankfully however that's close to bermuda so likely some very rough seas uh, up to 15 feet or so for bermuda but then in the gulf of course things are going to be kicking up as well especially as that next storm system is going to be making its way through now going toward the forecast for the next couple of days this is what gfs has to show with these storm systems across the u.s what happens is that there is uh the jet stream and when there is a dip in the jet stream that is troughing so when there is an n shape that is rigid u shape is troughing and with troughing that allows for cold air from canada to dip to the south and when this mass of cold dry air meets warm moist air coming in from the atlantic that is what results in these storm systems forming and here we can see the forecast for tomorrow evening and there we can see that area of low pressure and to the north of it further up north you can see some of these blue shadings which indicates snow but then all that moisture is expected to be feeding into it uh, resulting in that overall storm system which will affect most of the u.s so by this time as we head into tomorrow evening louisiana going towards mississippi even alabama parts of the florida panhandle uh sections of eastern texas going towards arkansas missouri all of these states likely to be affected by this developing storm system and it intensifies as we head into tuesday there we can see all of that activity and where we see uh, more of these shades of yellows oranges and reds that is indicating a lot more heavy rainfall further up to the north is going to be cold enough for the precipitation type to be uh snow so some areas may experience some heavy snow those strong winds even that risk of severe thunderstorms moving through as well so that is expected with that next system eventually it continues its way out by the middle of the week we can see that much of the activity in the associated front is expected to be offshore of the u.s but then as we head into the latter part of this week by friday there we can see that next storm system developing in parts of the southern u.s so that's going to be the kind of pattern as i said that we see headed out towards saturday uh there's that associated front snow on the western side of that area of low pressure into the north again it's going to be cold enough because that cold air is dipping the tropical air is over toward the east for the most part so all of that activity making its way through but again this is a forecast so it is bound to change and uh with that storm system expected late this week Weekend and early next week what may happen is that the mass of cool air these uh, below average temperatures may actually manage to reach parts of the northern Caribbean so this is the GFS temperature anomaly map so basically showing uh, how much the temperature differs from what is typical based on the color so the shades of blue is going to the dark purples that is indicating below average temperatures while the pale yellows oranges and reds they indicate above average temperatures well, here we can see that again with that mass of cold uh, cold air is going to be affecting much of the eastern u.s and we can see it depend as far as portions of mexico cuba and the bahamas as we head into late saturday of this week and then as we head towards sunday uh, we can see that it dips a little further to the south so areas such as jamaica could even feel some impacts from this as it relates to the cooler temperatures and that would be welcomed because with the previous system that has moved through and nothing much there right now if it is not windy it's quite hot so we've been experiencing that and especially for the eastern islands which haven't been uh, experiencing much rainfall or a difference in temperature it's been very warm so this would be much appreciated for the most part i know that for sure and uh, we'll have to wait and see if it'll help to induce some substantial rainfall as well but i'll be keeping you guys posted as we head throughout this week and that is pretty much it for this update video so i know it's been a bit lengthy and i really hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions as always please leave them in the comments i'll respond to you when i get the chance to do so and remember to always be weather wise